Police of Reddit, what is your best nope, not worth it story? Dust off your throwaway and let us know what your best nope, it's not worth pulling them over, approaching, etc. story is. So I'm 22, and my best friend of 15 years is heading up to see me from about an hour away. I don't hear anything from him for a while, and then I get a call three hours late, he wants me to come pick him up at a nearby Starbucks. I say okay, and try to ask more, but he doesn't tell me. Turns out, he passed a cop with a radar gun going 120 miles per hour on his sport bike. He remembers hearing something about cops not chasing sport bikes, so even when he accumulates five cops on his tail he still tries to keep running. Finally, he has to slow to take the sharp turn of an on-ramp from the 167 to the 405, and he slows to 90 miles per hour, but it's not enough. He slides off the lane and can't pull the bike back to the road, then loses control completely and shoots into 20-foot thick blackberry sticker bushes and the bike goes off somewhere else. He walked away with only a few bad scratches. I still don't know how he is alive or how he only had to do a couple of days of community service for that. There was a video posted on r slash Australia yesterday of some NT cops chasing a couple of asterisk offenders on foot. One of the is about to get nabbed but runs into croc infested water. You can almost hear the cop thinking not worth it as he stops at the edge of the water and watches the guy run away. Awesome footage, we'll add the link when I'm not on my phone. Edit. Yes. The YouTube link is it. Here is the OP, if you're interested in the news report or Reddit comments. Maybe even drop some karma in r slash Australia. Here is a link to a follow-up article where police defend their decision. NT was wrong, this was in Townsville, QLD. I believe this fits for what you are asking. Forgive me it's a little long. When I was on field training, just after the academy, I was on the last phase on field training which is where they have a trainer ride with you, but we all pretend the trainer isn't there so they can see how you will be on your own. During this time my trainer and I responded to a drowning call as a backup unit. Once we got there it was determined that it was a child drowning. As any police officer will tell you, any case involving children always hits the hardest. I did a quick walk around the scene. It was a nice home had a pool and a hot tub out back, which was all fenced in. But because they had children there, the owners also put a fence around the back door to create another barrier between the back door and where the pool and hot tub were at. I could tell immediately that the parents were trying to do the right thing and make the house as safe as possible for their little ones. The hot tub even had a protective covering over it which acted as a secondary safety measure, and should have supported the weight of the child with no problems. The child that drowned was just about two years old. At the house was an older sister of the child, mom, dad, and grandparents, all obviously in unfathomable grief, and it showed. The ambulance was just in the process of loading the child to take her to the hospital. I was given a brief story as to what happened. Apparently mom decided to take a nap with her sweet little daughter, and they both went to bed in mom's bed. The child woke up before mom and began to wander around. She was still more comfortable with crawling, than walking, from what I was told, even though by this age she had learned to walk just fine. She wandered to the back door which was cracked open. The child then goes to the gate surrounding the back door which would normally prevent the child from getting into the pool area, but the last person to use the gate didn't let it latch all the way, so the child was able go through the gate. The child then goes up to the hot tub, and the hot tub cover was not properly secured all the way and the child fell into the hot tub and drowned right outside of mom's room while she napped. Father was watching TV, sister was in her room listening to music. So sad. I was then tasked to go to the hospital where the child was being taken and to stand by until detectives could get there, but before I could do that I had to go tell the media where they could stage it. Somehow they got the news of this and were starting to show up. After I did that I went to the hospital with my trainer. Once we got there the ambulance had already shown up as well as the immediate family, and there were in emergency room number two. 
I was instructed that I had to go into that room and stand by until detectives got there. When I walked in that room I was not ready for what I encountered, and years later I realized that even today I would still not be ready for it. When I walked in the mom was holding onto her daughter who was now lifeless and somewhat bloated looking from drowning. The body looked unreal, skin was blotchy, but I could still see her hair in my mind, it looked normal, it was brown, somewhat curly like she just woke up. It looked so unreal. Despite how her skin looked, and her being somewhat bloated, her face appeared normal, like she seemed peacefully asleep, and all I wished for was for her to just wake up, but she never did. Mom was crying and letting out noises that haunt me to this day. Also in the room was the father and the grandparents, all also crying uncontrollably. The mom was rocking back and forth holding onto her daughter. There I am just standing there, trying not to be noticed as I realized if I was in their shoes I would want to be able to grieve without some police officer standing over my shoulder. I tried to be a fly on the wall for them. After several minutes the nurses removed the entire family, and as mom was leaving, she laid the child gently back on the table, and kissed her forehead goodbye. Now I was stuck in the room with my trainer, we did not say a word. We remained in there as we were supposed to for about an hour, until detectives arrived, while this child laid there. All I could do was stare at her, and her images burned in my mind. We weren't allowed to cover her. When detectives got there, including a supervisor for that unit, they asked what happened when I got there. I explained to the supervisor what all happened when I got to the hospital. I was a little taken back for what happened next. After I explained that I stood by to let the parents grieve, I was then yelled at and scolded for allowing the parents to handle the child as they did, meaning letting the mom and dad hold their child. It was explained to me that this case was still under investigation and that until they could prove otherwise they needed to make sure it wasn't a homicide, and that it was in fact an accidental drowning. By me allowing the parents to touch their child at all was me contaminating the crime scene and possibly ruining any forensic evidence that might break this case. It wasn't a light scolding either, as I was still on field training. My trainer just stood by and didn't say a word. I was told that I needed to secure this room and not allow anyone in it, that's the protocol, and if the parents tried to come in and didn't listen to me that I was to have the hospital staff make them stay back. If that didn't work I was to arrest the parents for interfering. I could understand this if it was definitely a questionable case, but this wasn't. What the hell? Was going through my head after I heard this. Also going through my head was if this was my child it would take a lot more than some police to hold me back from seeing my child. They would have to arrest me to get me to leave that room, and even then good luck with that. After we were relieved from that room now that the sergeant was done scolding me, my trainer asked me a question. He asked, after being yelled at, and learning how to handle this call, would you do it differently if you did it over again? I knew what he was getting at, would I forcibly remove the parents from the room or let them grieve again knowing what we both knew, that it was completely an accident to a nice family? And given that I could tell immediately this was not an intentional drowning, my reply was no way in hell. To which he replied good, neither would I. It was then that I started to truly understand the meaning of officer discretion. I guess that was my nope part of this story, that if I ever get on a call similar to this I will gladly say nope and let the family grieve, as long as it's obvious it was an accident and not a homicide. Sometimes it's better to be human than to follow protocol. I forgot to mention that this all happened on Easter Day. Ever since then I hate when Easter comes around, because I always get nightmares about a week out from Easter, about this call. I relieve it that entire week. I wake up constantly night after night throughout the night sweating, I see her face as if it was yesterday. And it makes me think that this girl will never get to celebrate any more Easters, nor will Easter be the same for that family ever again. It makes me think of my loved ones that are around this age. It eats at me and this is years later. Every year it's the same thing over and over again. I hate Easter because of this, and it's sad because I used to love it. Sorry this was so long.